time for lecture three then. Food poisoning and foodborne disease and personal hygiene. The aim of this unit is to increase your understanding of food contamination and the importance of personal hygiene. By the end of this unit you should be able to state the three main ways that bacteria act to cause food poisoning, identify the main sources of bacterial contamination, give examples of action which should be taken to prevent the contamination of food, and state and explain the reasons for high standards of personal hygiene. And here's the three main ways then that bacteria act to cause food poisoning. First of all by ingesting large numbers of bacteria, for example salmonella, that could take hundreds of thousands or a million bacteria to make you ill, by bacterial toxins, for example from Staphylococcus aureus, or by bacterial spores, for example Clostridium and Bacillus. But don't forget, as I said, bacterial spores per se won't hurt you, they're quite harmless. It's when the spores germinate, that's when they start to cause a problem. The definition of food poisoning is an acute illness caused by the consumption of contaminated or poisonous food. Acute means happens quickly, as opposed to chronic, which takes a long period of time. The incubation period this is the time taken for you to start showing symptoms after you've eaten the infected food or drink is anything from 1 to 36 hours. Duration of the illness anything from 1 to 7 days. And with food poisoning it requires large numbers of bacteria to make you ill. We've looked at food poisoning, let's look at foodborne diseases. These enter our system by what's known as the faecal oral route. In other words, Infected material is passed through the intestines of animals or humans and we've ingested that material. Now it's called a foodborne disease because it can be transmitted on food or in contaminated water. But it doesn't have to grow on food or in food like food poisoning bacteria. So it doesn't have to have nutrients such as protein. It can just survive on the flesh of things like fruit for example. An example on our slide shows you how foodborne diseases come into existence. For example, raw sewage is pumped into a water supply without any treatment, and that water supply is used to spray fruit. That fruit then will contain the bacteria that was present or is present in the sewage. Examples, we've got Campylobacter, Listeria, E. coli 0157, Typhoid or Salmonella typhi, Dysentery, from Shigella sinae, Shigella flexneri, hepatitis A and viral gastroenteritis. The last two are viruses and not bacteria. Slightly different from bacteria in as much as they are very much smaller than bacteria. And they act differently on the body in as much as they act like a parasite they become part of the host cells. Hepatitis A affects the liver. Hepatitis literally means inflammation of the liver. There are seven different types of hepatitis, from hepatitis A right through to hepatitis H. Hepatitis A is the only foodborne disease. All the other hepatitis variants, you will get through blood infection, through using infected sharps, through sexual contact, etc. Viral gastroenteritis, or the Norwalk virus, you might have heard it called. This sometimes is called the winter vomiting bug or the 48 hour bug. It's a very virulent type of foodborne disease. It literally spreads like wildfire and you tend to find this in a lot of institutions like cruise ships, prisons, colleges, schools, classrooms etc. 